Hello, I am a neuroscientist. Uh, so does everyone know what the neuroscientist does? What do they study? The brain, right. And so uh, they study the brain and they actually spend a lot of time in a research lab because the only way that you can get access to, uh, to the brain is through very, very expensive equipment. So we have, um, let me see if I get my slides up there, if not. Uh, so it's about fifty thousand uh, dollars to record from the brain, right? So it, it, it takes a PhD in order to be able to get access to the equipment and to know how to use this equipment. Uh, and that, to me, seems silly. This was me in grad school about a decade ago, and thinking about the fact that I got here just to get access to these tools to understand how the brain works was weird because one out of uh, five people, that's 20% of the entire world, has a neurological disorder, right? And how many cures do we have for neurological diseases? Who, yeah, who's, had, who's heard of the pill that gets rid of Alzheimer's? Yeah, it doesn't happen, nothing. So we have zero cures for neurological disorders. Uh, yet one out of five people, 20% of the world, have these things. And so it seems silly that the only way to learn about the brain and start to become interested in, in uh, you know, studying the brain and understanding how the system works is this is how we're going to solve these, these disorders is by doing sort of basic research. Uh, is the only way you can do that is to dedicate your life, you know, for the next uh, like six or seven years to be able, in order to get access to the tools. And so... It didn't seem very uh, logical uh, to me uh, and to my lab mates. And so uh, we looked at other areas in science. For example, in astronomy, you don't have to get a PhD in astrophysics to look through a telescope, right? You can just uh, go by even a, even a cheap telescope. You can start to look at planets uh, and maybe make discoveries. A lot of discoveries were created by amateurs. The Hale-Bopp comet was discovered by amateurs. There's now exoplanets being discovered by amateurs. Uh, but the point is you don't have to go out and, uh, and dedicate your life in order just to get, you know, just to look through a telescope. And so uh, we thought about that for a while, and we decided that we wanted to do something very similar, that we could sort of democratize the tools that we're using, these $40,000 rigs we're using in our labs, and make them available uh, so that students would be able to do this as well. And so we came up with our version of a, uh, of a telescope, which we called the Spiker Box. It's a little kit right here. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to uh, uh, peer in to understand how the brain works. Okay? And we're going to do that today. We're going to do that together. Uh, and you guys are going to be my volunteers. Uh, so... Um, but I was just to spend one more minute just, just describing it because, uh, again, they don't teach neuroscience in schools like they should, right? And so I'm just going to just take a step back and just explain a little bit about the, the cells inside the brain. Uh, these are specialized cells. We call them neurons. And neurons are unique in cells that they have these weird processes, we call them, things that come out from the center of the cell. Uh, and in particular, there's a very long one, it's called the axon. And it's through this axon that all the information in the world uh, that you're receiving right now, the, the sound of my voice, the, what I look like, you're making a percept of who I am and, and trying to gain some knowledge about this, all being done down these axons through electricity. So we use electricity as a, as a way to communicate from one cell to the other. Uh, and that comes in a very uh, special packet. Uh, we call that a spike. And it's a spike because it looks like a, almost like a railroad spike you'd see uh, that's on there. And so what we're going to try to do today is we're going to try to record these spikes uh, here live from you guys. All right. Uh, so I will need a, uh, a volunteer to come forward. Anyone? Okay, you right there with the red jacket on. Hey, can you leave? You have a jacket. Can you leave the jacket there? That's my only request. And so while you're coming up here, I'll say so. Uh, electrical communication is very important in the brain, uh, but when it gets to the end of the line where it synapses, that's what we call the little gap between it. And that gap uh, was discovered in the in the 1950s, even though it was predicted, you know, about 100 years before that, because it's so impossibly close. Uh, it's about 20 nanometers uh, thick. Right, come on over here. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're now we're going to record 
uh, these, these spikes, the electrical portion of the spikes, as they're going to come from her brain uh, down to her spinal cord. So it synapses there. That's that small gap where chemical messages get passed. And then it's going to come back out from there onto her muscles. And on her muscle, uh, uh, she's going to have some synapses there. They're going to cause the muscle fibers to, to become uh, electrically activated again. So what we're going to do is sort of go one step between. Um, I'll, I'll show you really quickly. So again, from the motor cortex down to the spinal cord, then out to the arm. So I'll give me your arm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some electrodes. Oh, I'll use the other one. Uh, I'm going to put some electrodes on here. And what is happening with the electrodes, I can show you here, it's just a little bit of salt water. And there's metal here. And so electricity likes to flow down metal. And the salt water, what it's going to do is allow the electricity to flow from the body. If you remember in your chemistry classes, like the sodium and potassium and chloride, they all have the pluses and minuses. That's, those are the... Uh, what's going to carry our electric charge from her body into these wires right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to listen as I plug her into an amplifier. So this is like, um, like many things in science, you have to make it bigger, right? You know, telescopes, like I said, make distant planets bigger. You know, microscopes make small cells bigger, uh, you know, PCR machines make DNA bigger, but uh, this makes small amounts of electricity bigger. So when I plug it in and we listen to it, so go ahead and give your hand a squeeze. And relax. And do it again. So those are the action potential. Those are the spikes that are coming from your cortex down to your spinal cord and back out to your arm. So what is your name? Annabella. Annabella. So, Annabella, I'm going to show you really quickly what your brain looks like. Uh, okay, as amplified. All right. So, here on the screen. So, give it a squeeze again. Okay, so those are, those are the spikes. And so, I'm going to show you what an individual spike looks like so we can see what the action potential looks like. I'm going to pause it here and just re uh, relax it again. And then I'm going to average it a few times. So, go ahead. So, this is like a little trigger. I have to squeeze it again. And then we're going to zoom in on this guy. Oh, yeah, look at that. There it is. So this is the action potential. These are the neurons. This is how the way, like everything that you're ever, you're, the first kiss, the smell of your grandmother's closet, all of those memories are being encoded by this grit. It's like in the movie The Matrix when you saw that code, like, oh, my God, that's reality. This is your reality, people. Uh, this is how the spikes are actually being communicated. So we're going to use this right now to do an experiment. I'm going to do one quick experiment. Uh, and then I'm going to invite somebody else up to help us as well. Let me turn this down for a second. So what the experiment is now, so if you guys can see here, whoopsie. All right. Can you guys have, you all see that screen? So that's one second right here. I want everyone to look at this. This is one second of time. And I'm going to play a little game here. And I'm going to show you a little light, okay? And when you see that light, I want you to answer. You want to, I want you to tell me that you see it by, like, squeezing as fast as you can, right, like this. You do it. Okay. So that's going to be the answer. And the question is, how fast can you react when you see this light come on? Okay. All right. What do you guys think? I'm going to pause that one. We can come back. And so, oopsies. This is one second. So that's about 150 milliseconds, I would say. All right. And so what we're going to be able to do now is just from her wrist, or just from her arm, we're going to be able to clock the inner workings of her brain, all right? And I'm going to do that by doing another experiment where you're going to see the red light and you're going to move your arm, okay? Just you know, what you did last time. It was perfect. Uh, and then I'm going to, when you see that red light, you're going, to, you're, going to see, you're going to move. Ah. So now I've added a distractor, all right? So this is a, so you're going to ignore the green one. And, and only, so what's going to happen inside of her brain when she does this now? She now has to make another decision. She's making a decision on what color this is, and then she's going to react. But everything else is the same. She's going to see a red light, and she's going to move. And so what we can do is I can do it a few times. Ah, she, <laughs> an infinite reaction time. All right. So, uh, so I'll do it a few times.
are, are you? Yeah. Well, actually, no. I, uh, we've we've now changed this because it turns out that 15% of the population are colorblind to green and red, and I, re I didn't realize that. Maybe are you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've now switched it to blue and red. All right. But uh, so bear with me. Okay. So now we see a a, sli a longer delay because now she has to make a, a decision. I'm going to show you really quickly what that looks like. Um, so 150 milliseconds is just to make the quick change. But when you have to make that decision, there's another gap there. And what we can do is we can subtract the two reaction times from each other. And now we know exactly how long it takes for Annabella to make a decision in her brain, at least a decision about color, right? All right, so we are uh, advanced people here at, at TEDx Porto, so we want to move on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, a, a computer that's going to be able to uh, record this activity. Let me see if I can find a, I'll put this one in, okay. Um, this is a little Arduino, it's a little, it's a little microcontroller, and what we can have it do is have it do some, uh, some work for us. So the first thing we're gonna do is have it record the output of your brain, and we're gonna make it turn on some lights. So it's like a little love meter. So as you squeeze your hand, yeah, okay, there you go. So, so what we're doing, so that same electromyogram we're now putting into some code here, so as you, as you do it, you go, yeah, from like, you know, cold fish to red hot lover, all right, so it's like that. But we want to be something, we, we can do something even more. If we hook up some robotics to it, I can have you then control not just your hand, but also this kind of, uh, this hand here. So as you, now if you, whoopsies. So give it a squeeze again. Okay. Ah. Hold on. Oh my goodness. It only goes up to 20 volts. What is it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. All right, let's try it one more time. No, it's not you. It's, it's, it's not you, it's me. It's actually this. All right, well, you know what? This is our prototype. We've now moved on. And so we have a, a more advanced version of that one. Okay, so if you hold this with your other hand. So now when you squeeze this hand, you're going to control this one, right? So now I'm going to have you do, this is a neural prosthetic because we're recording the output of her brain and we're making it control some devices here, right? And so now I can get you to try to use that to maybe stack some cups up, you know? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and just try to pick it up. Oh, there we go. All right, you got it. Try to uh, put this one on there. All right, so this is a way that we can use the output of the brain to actually do some th real things in the real world. You can imagine. <laughs> there we go. So now you can imagine what we can do with this. And, uh, and so there's a, a, a number of scientists that just spend their time looking at different ways to do these types of recordings from, the, from the, the muscles to be able to control devices. But we want to go one step further, right? We are, again, uh, we've got to move on. This is, this is a tough crowd. So we've got to... <laughs> All right, so we're going to need one more uh, audience member to come forward. All right. How about you right there in the... You have a sweater. I just want someone that has, like, access to some... Sleep. My, I, I need arms. I need arms, people. Uh, let's see. I want, a, I want a dude. All right, you. All right. Oh, you want to take your sweater? Okay, come on out, man. He's like, he's, I'm committed. All right. So, <laughs> so we are going to build bridges today. Um, and so we're going to do that by making a, a human bridge. So we're going to take the output of your brain. So we, as we discussed, from your motor cortex down to your spinal cord, out to your arm. And what we're going to do is, what is your name, mate? Ricardo. Ricardo. Uh, so Ricardo's brain is doing the same thing. So he's got a motor cortex right here. He's synapsing on the spinal cord, and it's coming out to his arm. So when he moves his arm like this, like, he's, like if he goes like this, he can imagine that he's got the same neurons in his brain doing what your brain is doing right now. Okay? So it's going to come down. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hijack his brain, and we're going to put your brain into where his brain would have been. Right? So... <laughs> um, <laughs> And we're going to make a bridge, <laughs> a human-to-human -human bridge. So, yeah, so, no, I'll do this hand. We, we don't want to cross streams here. All right. So I'm going to hit your ulnar nerve. And so this is the, the funny bone. Uh, and it's called that because it, it's uh, really close to the, uh, to the surface of the skin. So sometimes you can hit it. Um, and, but that's good for us because we want things that are close to the surface of the skin so that we can, we can control it. So what I'm going to do now is when I put you two together, uh, I'm going to turn this on very lightly. And you, I want you to do the same thing with you. You're going to make those lights come on. 
You got it? Yeah, just make, like, move it like this. Like you're moving your arm up. There you go. Perfect. All right. Not too much. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the output, that thing that we saw on the screen, your spikes. I'm going to send your EMG into Ricardo over here. He's not gonna. He's gonna feel it here, but he's gonna see it up here. All right. So, no, Ricardo, you're gonna look away. So there's no no games here. Oh wait, he's gonna move his hand because of my command. Yeah. <laughs> because not because of your command, you can talk to it, but it's your brain. It's gonna be your brain. All right. So you can. All right. I'm gonna turn up a little bit. So when you move your arm a little bit. All right. You wanna make those lights come on? Like, whoop. okay. I'll turn up a little bit more. Okay. So <laughs> are you feeling that? Yeah. Okay. So we now have a connection. So can I turn it up just a little bit more? Maybe. All right. Do it one more time. Okay. So we got. It. <laughs> All right. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, what would it, what would happen if I took away your free will? If I stopped? If I if I made your arm move, would Ricardo's arm move? Yes. You think so? Yeah. How many people think Ricardo's arm will move? About half of us, I would say, maybe 20 percent. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to do an experiment. So I'm going to just move it yourself. I'm going to move it myself. Uh, ah, why not? It's not my brain. It's not your brain, right? So maybe make sure it still works. Okay, all right. So <laughs> being a good sport, mate. All right. Um, so now what would happen? Relax, relax, relax. What would happen if I, st if I stopped your arm? You want to move that arm, but I'm going to prevent you from doing it, okay? I'm going to stop you. And... You go ahead and try to move it. You, okay. So that, <laughs> right. So it doesn't matter if, if you're actually doing it or not. It's isometric contraction. As long as your brain is sending the command, we can amplify it and send that message into his arm. So I'm going to release you guys. Thank you. And thank you guys for being a good sport. <laughs> And I'm going to invite everybody in the audience to join us in the neural revolution as we bring these things into schools around your country as well. So thank you so much. Yeah. You can take those. That's your a gift. Cheers.